How did the song go? That's what I got. We were singing entirely different songs. Oh, I'm thinking of like a pregame song. No, like you're trying to go for the same song. I think so. Like the dance move. All right, our listeners are missing the the hand motion dance. There's moves. a lot of. Oh, no, they may not see it, but I don't think they're missing it. Oh, <laughs> sneaky button press. Bazing. <laughs> Well, on that note, welcome back to another episode of Tales from the Service Industry. <laughs> Wait, we're going to have to hit pause right there, right out of the shoot. It's not another. It's oh. the last of the season. Oh, Aww, sad. Boom, 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 boom. So Damn sad. It. But it is a season wrap up. That is true. But we are kind of celebrating another end of season in the only way we know how to celebrate. With liquor? Well, yeah. So in front of us, we have a very, very special bottle of champagne to celebrate. So (laughs) Sound effects. Brought to you by Miss B. (laughs) So yes, this is going to be the end of season. So this is wrap up of season two, our 41st episode. Oh, I know. Deep in the double digits. Yeah, for sure. It's been a long season. <laughs> it has. It's a long year. It has. I mean, we had a little interseasonal episode with Ms. B's rant about penguins being defiled. Mm-hmm. Yes, and then we, we took did. a break. We, yeah. We kind of had to. We kind of ghosted, y'all. Yeah. Our bad. For like two months. Dang. Just over. Yeah, we had a gap from uh, January 1st to March 12th, I 18th. think it was. Even worse. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> Had to sneak in that extra yeah, week mm-hmm. on us. Had to keep it real. But well, then we came back in full force. Exactly. And that's where we are ending it on full force. Yeah. We're going to take woo, a little woo. break. There probably will still be a little bit of content here and there. Oh, I mean, we talk a lot. So definitely there will be. Yeah. Just we need our weekly therapy. Yeah. We just might channel efforts into some different types of content. Love that for us. Yeah. And if we have any updates, you'll hear from us. Totes. All right, shall we pop this bottle to season two? This is a little, uh, as Liz likes to say, a little BTS here. Mm -hmm. Normally when we sit down to record, we sit down preloaded with a nice glass of red or three. They're small glasses, okay? They're not full glasses. That is not a small glass. No, no, no. a goblet. No, the size of glass we pour, like the ounces. Yeah, fair enough, fair enough. So normally we sit down preloaded. Tonight we are actually not ready. (laughs) Because we wanted to do it on air. Yeah, we did. Okay. Cheers to season two. Are you ready? Yep. Woo! Oh, nicely done. (laughs) Yeah. It's one of my best skills. It was very controlled. I really do try. When I pop, there's sometimes a bit of a mess. Hey, no, let's keep it clean. Well, we hope you gather around your holiday table with some vino, if I'm, you know, being selfish here. Or whatever you are into. Hey, and for my friends out there who don't drink alcohol, fun fact, because I almost bought it in the grocery store this last weekend, they sell (laughs) alcohol-free champagne, wine, and spirits. I saw that reel of yours. (laughs) I had no idea that was a thing. And then I went to Target. It's like a section. So, uh, Mm -hmm. Miss B, not to burst your bubble, quite literally, because we just poured champagne. (laughs) Um, but the minute I saw the photo of the bottle you were referring to, I literally in my head was like, she has no idea. It's non-alcoholic. <laughs> I had no She's got idea. no idea. I, I knew the brand. It was free, right? It, I was thinking fre- like fre-, fre. Like fre- French. Like, ooh. Why? No, no fre- it means fre- free of alcohol. I didn't know that. And a fun sucker. And well, Kate, now that my okay, eyes have been opened. There's plenty. Cheers. I've seen it in other stores and it's in its own section with like other alcohol free stuff. This it was next to and with all the alcohol stuff. So I'm like looking at a bottle of champ and then I look at the next one. They should be separate. I mean, separate but equal, but the big like zero alcohol. (laughs) Yes. Like a red thing. I almost bought it. It was in my hand because it was so cute. Was it cheaper than others? No, it was Mm. the same price. So I was like, oh, it must be good. That's BS. This is delicious. This is very delicious. Okay, Delish. so this is a very important winery to Liz. I actually grew up going to this winery. I started going when I was like eight or nine, and I would like play in the back. And then it was like when I turned 16, I would be the DD for my parents. <laughs> and then finally, 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 I turned 21. I would have been drinking the wine for a couple of years. 
Fair enough. But yes, very special place in my heart. If anyone is in the Central California, it's called Mayo Family Winery. Very delicious. Shout out Mayo. Thanks for helping us celebrate our two years. This is so good nice. stuff. I like this. Yeah, no, this is one of my favorite wines. That is not it. Okay, so just as a kind of a ground rules here, throughout the evening, we're going to share some news stories, but also kind of recap some of the fun stuff from the rest of the season. Yes. So, Bill, do you have any like favorite, favorite stories that we told in 2023? Yes. I'm really conflicted. It's okay. kind of like, it's kind of, look, it, it's our podcast. So it's kind of like saying which one of your kids is your favorite. You love them all just for different reasons, right? For sure. Amen. So for me, my favorite episode is the Drunken Lion Rider. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Because, I mean, who doesn't enjoy a good story about drunk people making a scene in a lobby, mm-hmm. taking a swing at a cop, going to jail? I mean, it's just fun stuff, right? So as far as episodes go, that was probably my favorite episode. Favorite stories, though? Oof. That is a hard one to pick. Because <laughs> there's so many good ones, even in every episode. I know. I mean, like, we could go with the octopus arm. That was a good one. <laughs> yes. I mean, the whole conversation with uh, Mike and the lost and found having to be delivered to a funeral. So, I And have an to Im- say... impromptu uh, eulogy given by somebody <laughs> that doesn't even really know the guy that died. Yes. And I have to say that episode, for sure, I think that's when I laughed the hardest. Like, I could not breathe. I laughed so hard. I was crying. Agreed. Mike definitely, like, props. He is one of those guests that just has me on the floor every time he comes. I just, he's just the funniest human. Well, I love his delivery, too. His deliveries are always just the most even keeled <laughs> conversation with the most twisted, out of left field. Well, hook. I, I think we could all agree. Mike keeps us laughing, oh, but yes. Andy, our jaws are on the ground. His schedule is crazy. Crazy, but I still want to get him back because he promised to give us the most salacious of stories. Yes. Ooh. Which, okay, to recap one more story, I still can't get over the number will surprise you. Wasn't that season one? That was season one. What? I'm still yeah. talking about it. I literally. So whenever people ask about the pod, that is the episode I tell them to go to. <laughs> I seriously thought that was this year. No, that was last year. Oh no, my but, God. But you know what? Time flies. I do the exact same thing. Oh, okay. But I always, I always have a disclaimer question and that is what offends you <laughs> <laughs> it's a very good lead-in question well because it determines whether i'm going to send them a link to episode one or episode two uh-huh mm-hmm. and that makes me think of the more recent episode we did uh, uh probably totally irresistible no unpopular opinions oh that makes me think of that with the, what offends you <laughs> mm. Uh, who doesn't love a good Hitler joke? Oh, <laughs> that's a joke. I'm it's a going joke. from the Jew on the pod. It's, it's a joke. Okay. <laughs> Jeez, don't come for us. I don't. Oh, my mouth was God. on the ground when I heard that. I was like, what? I okay. loved your comment though. Was absolutely my favorite. <laughs> How was his mustache? Fine. Was it fine? <laughs> <laughs> oh my god okay so hilarious. i have a i have another question for you guys okay what episode did you learn the most from Ooh, Ooh. for me definitely life's bookmarks part yes. one and two it's exactly what i was thinking chels like i just i love tattoos you guys know this like i am a tattoo girl and i learned so much about the industry how it works like how to get into it and how much work goes into it to get in and then to stay in and just everything i was so just entranced in her stories and the grind that they go through yes I definitely, I feel like I learned the most and I walked away from that, like having a better understanding of the industry. And And appreciation. Yes. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And it just made me want more tattoos, so. What I thought was great about that episode is that, again, BTS here, for the most part, we'll sit down and we'll talk for an hour, hour and a half with somebody. And then when I put the episode together, we keep the best of the best. Well, our conversation with her was so good that it had to go into just two episodes. It was all the best. The yeah, flow was I just, amazing. I didn't feel good about cutting out anything that she said because she had such great things to share. Yeah. And passion, man. Yes. We need to bring her back, too. I'd love to have her back mm-hmm. in season mm-hmm. three. Okay. Chelsea Dagger, you're coming to season three. <laughs> You know what? Actually, this is a great moment that for those that have been listening to all the episodes, leave us a comment on social media or the episodes that you like. We would love to hear why. Yes. Oh, yeah. And we'll share it. But Agreed. next season. Absolutely. <laughs> oh, man. That was such a fun one. What about one of your faith faves? We've really recapped all of them. Um, but hold on. Let me take a peek. See at my notes here. 
Oh, no, I've got to go at Mr. Mayo. That I was, was just open that. That was an insane <laughs> story of just there was no mayonnaise oh. or there was never enough mayonnaise for that well, individual. Sir, how much mayonnaise would you want on that sandwich? Goodness. Enough to make you sick. <laughs> That's disgusting. <laughs> Oh man! They should have just given him like a like how big are like commercial mayonnaise containers? Full gallons. They should have just given him a gallon. Oh, that still gives me the chills. Here you go, sir. We upcharged you enough for the extra, 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 extra mayo. Just yeah, take the rest. That conversation with Chef was so much fun, and it was very cool hearing about you know the culinary world and you know how they get into that and all the work that goes into that as well. And you know those people who are behind the scenes that you don't really understand what they do until you know they talk about it and it's not just cooking things all Mm -hmm. the you know menu making and training and food temps (laughs) oh yeah that blows my mind all the health department requirements yeah (laughs) and not using a microwave (laughs) oh yeah the microwave thing yeah they don't use those in real kitchens so funny it's just an all-purpose tool to me Uh, yeah yeah (laughs) but no i i think we've touched on all of my favorites well, listener favorites Oh, was a little different story. Okay. Three Alarm Stupidity took the number one for our downloads. Oh, that, that was so wild. What wild? What's, what's wild about having employees be complicit in pulling fire alarms so you don't get to flagged as being late at work? time card. <laughs> what's wild is having to pull a fire alarm three different times, having an entire mall evacuated just so you didn't get a write-up. Yeah. And wasn't there like Wild. a phone call made in the like back store room or something? Yeah, like bomb threat. Bomb threat. That's what it oh, was. And they had Wild. to evacuate the whole mall. Yes. yes. All and the for phone call a, came from the back of the store. All for uh-huh. a minimum wage job that you might or might not have lost. <laughs> Definitely lost. <laughs> Oh man! Do you ever like wonder where those people are at now? Like, what I are, do. What I Google people doing? like that. Shut up! I mean, I don't know those people's names, but in my life, you know, you think back to someone who did something crazy. You know, like in middle school, who stuck the fork in the socket, and I'm like, they have to be in prison now. <laughs> they had to have gotten arrested by now. Must have. Something, now they're onto something harder. Something happened to them. <laughs> yes. Like all my school bullies now, they're like successful and still skinny and blonde, and it makes me want to punch things. Gross. I know. I'm like, oh, come on. At least one of you be in jail. Please. (laughs) I'm petty and I hold grudges. And I'm Miss B. Hello. (laughs) Yeah, guys. Miss B, like, holds grudges like no other. I do. I hold grudges so tight to not to steal the words of another comedian, but I would happily hold your grudge, too. I literally heard a comedian say this, and I was, like, in love with her. And she said if she could open her own grudgery to hold other people's grudges, she would. You would. And I, you, 100%. 100%. 100%. I think you already have. <laughs> I know I do. I, I, I don't blame you. I'm kind of right there with you. I just, you know what? You can call it it's petty. It's Gemini thing. I, uh, no, <laughs> no. I'm not a Gemini. I am the complete, complete opposite. Ms. B can back me up on this. Yes, because I will be upset with her because she won't hold a grudge. Like, there'll be a guy who either, like, ghosts her or, like, you know, ends <laughs> their seeing each other. And I am enraged. And she's just like, whatever. It wasn't meant to be, man. And I'm like, fuck that guy. And I'm just, I am still mad at her breakup from like six, seven years ago. And we didn't even know each other back then. (laughs) I didn't even know each other. And I am so angry at that guy. I hate him. Like they ran into each other and I was pissed. And she's like, it was like a million years ago. I'm like, I don't care. And I was like, no, we we caught up. We we talked about like the weddings we were going to of people. No, I'm going to egg his house. I I, I don't (laughs) know where he lives. Good luck. Yeah, so that's Miss B. That's right. I Different carry wavelengths. Grudge. I carry grudges too. No, I just don't. I just don't have like the, the malice in me, and I don't have the emotional and mental capacity to like have so much hatred towards people. Ew! It brings you joy. Like there is no, joy my, in my, my heart. For my that. natural joy actually brings me joy <laughs> of <laughs> my capability of just letting things go, and Ew. it pisses people off. Let me yes. tell you. Yeah. Yes, it does. <laughs> just I don't want to piss you off. I want to piss off the people that should have pissed me off, but didn't. And I want them to be upset that I'm not upset. Ugh. Well, you don't let them know that they upset you. You pretend like you don't know who they are. No, I'm so happy and so nice and so kind. And when they're in your presence, Ugh, you look them in the eye and you smile. I kill them with kindness, truly. 
Oh, no, I do, too. And then you go behind their back and but make their house. mine's not fake. <laughs> you kill them with kindness. Ms. B wants to go kill them. Yeah. Yes, 100%. No, no. My <laughs> kindness is, like, absolutely gen. It's almost like a, I'm going to be so nice to you. Like, thank you so much for leaving my life. Your maturity is nauseating. <laughs> like, <laughs> well, my apologies. Anyway. Any hoozy. Any hoozy. <laughs> uh, do you guys uh, have any more highlights from season two? It was long and yet it happened so fast. Yeah, very like, true. I'm trying to remember everything we talked about, what we did this year, man. It was fun. Obviously, starting with my rant. Mm-hmm. I, I love my rants and those damn penguins. Yeah. I'm going to have to go visit them this year so I can defile them myself. Okay. Um, yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, I don't think there are penguins. I know. I saw vids and yeah, we don't and have polar bears. They're, yeah. No, <laughs> no penguins. There were quite a few episodes this season. How many? This is the 21st. Okay. Bad employee stories. Oh, was that the one where I talked about that girl who threw uniforms at me? Maybe. I don't remember a story about you getting uniforms. Oh, I do. Weren't you talk about that? Yeah. Weren't you like documenting her for not being in uniform and you were issuing the uniform? Yeah. And she was just like, I'm not wearing this. Yeah. I remember the one that was. uh, She quit by throwing them at me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I don't remember that part. I remember the story you were telling about the girl that showed up wearing pajamas to work. Oh, that is still a thing, you know? Pajamas. I still wear. I literally have a night auditor that they're more well disguised now. This is a completely different property. And she has these pants that like, they look like they could be pinstripe pants. And you look and I've told her, I was like, I hate those pants. She's like, they're pajamas. I'm like, makes sense. <laughs> Stop it. Okay, Don't you wear gotta, those again. You gotta give it to her though, being honest. True. Yeah, she, like, I was gonna wear them until I got caught. They're PJs. Yeah. Not gonna lie, I love that girl, but damn don't wear the pajamas is this at your current property (laughs) she's not there anymore but yes okay okay (laughs) well i'm lucky enough to wear stretchy pants to work every day and feel like i'm in pajamas so jealous i I know like real business clothes no no it's phenomenal tennis shoes stretchy pants i mean the polo can be like kind of uncomfortable yeah because you don't have to wear spanks (laughs) no 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 and then you throw like a quarter zip on top of it and wear my hair in a bun every day. A quarter zip. Is that a jacket? Yeah. Like a, a hoodie? Quarter, no. Or not a hoodie, but like I don't a, wear a pullover. I'm not that unprofessional. A quarter zip with a collar. <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> That's funny. Okay, d- would you call that a hoodie, even though it has no hood? No, but... It's a sweater. It's a light, pullover? Lightweight outerwear. How about that? Okay. Can we, That's g- fair. Can we agree on that? Yes. Okay. Because I'm so kind and Wait. so nice. And you're, and you're willing to let things go. <laughs> so much. Y'all ready for the holidays? I'm quite literally no. holidayed out already. And it's not even mid-December. Yeah, 100%. Agreed. People are so... I mean, we might have even said this last year. People are so mean during holiday season. Like, my week and this month has just been a nightmare. Like, I'm so peopled out. Oh, yeah. I'm right there with you. Yesterday, like, God, what time was it? About 8.45 in the morning. My day had already gone sideways. You were already over the week. Already over. <laughs> yep. Yeah, not even just the day. I, I'm just done with the month oh, at man. this point. Oh, right? 100%. Jeez. It's 8.45 in the morning. This woman shows up at the front desk saying, I'm X reward member. I have a guaranteed 9 a.m. check-in. Bull Sharky 9 a.m.? Yeah, 9 a.m. Is that, is that possible? No. no. Oh, okay. There, okay. There's no guaranteed early check-in because there's a of your request. status. There's a request. Yeah. Oh, okay. Fair enough. There I is have... a guaranteed late checkout, but not early check-in. So and I... she was adamant. My tier level, I get a complimentary guaranteed 9 a.m. check-in. Bull Shark. I don't know if you have this happen a lot, but it happens a lot with us, where they say, I got an email that said my room was ready to check-in. And I have to explain to them, no, that's your reward status saying you can mobily check-in now, but it doesn't mean your room's ready. Because they're like, I got it yesterday, and they get it the day before. It said I can check-in now. And I've looked at their email, and it comes from the reward. And basically, inv- <laughs> <laughs> I'm really sorry. <laughs> no, you're not. I'm really sorry. No, you're not. It's delicious champagne. <laughs> Roll with it. Lean into it. Drink it. Enjoy the bubbles. So the email invites them to check in early mm-hmm. using their mobile app. And they think that means their room is ready the day before. I can confirm this email does go out and it is a little weird. But do you read it? Uh, no. Because ah, it's the day before. <laughs> And ultimately, that's the problem because you, not you, you, but people just don't read the emails. Yeah. Well, also, I got that email and I was like, it's the day before. There's no way I can like. But people are dumb. So they come the next morning and say, yeah, my room was ready yesterday. 
My room was ready yesterday. And I'm guaranteed at 9 a.m. No, that's not how it rolls. Do you have many guests? Because this happened to me today. She's staying here. So she's high tier elite. Four rooms. Because it's all of her family staying here. And she was like, why don't all my keys have access to the concierge lounge? And I said, because the lounge is for you plus one guest. There's only one of you. And she's like, no, I get it for all my rooms because my elite status is on all of my rooms. Yeah. Again, that goes back to people not reading the rules and whatnot for the program. Mm -hmm. And she was absolutely adamant. And it was her rewards numbers. How am I the first one to tell you this? And I had to explain to her how it worked. And then when she continued to argue with me and continued to tell me how I'm wrong, I said, you know what? This is the brand standard. I did not make this up. This is not our hotel. If you would like, I can connect you with your elite line and you can talk to them and let me know what happens. The reason that people will say that is because it's kind of true. Most of the time, you don't want to upset your top tier guests. So you just kind of like, and you suck it up and you deal, which doesn't work well for B and I because that just builds the resentment, right? A hundred percent. And we hate you. But when you do try to like explain a situation to a guest and they get super defensive and super angry, now you're the bad guy because you're just making it clear what they can and cannot do. Ooh. Let's jump in the Wayback Machine on this one, because I think I shared a story about a woman that was super upset and irate about her room not having a USB port in it and demanding full compensation. (laughs) Do you remember this? Points. Do you remember this story? (laughs) That sounds like everyone we've told. (laughs) (laughs) Pretty much. I don't remember this. Oh, okay. So this was back in like August. Okay. And I had this guest that was furious that her room didn't have a USB port the charging block for all of her devices. I think I remember this. Yes, yes. What, was your hotel built in like 1980? Come on. Yes. I'm, I'm kidding. No Actually. Up, no upgrade? It's just an outlet. <laughs> We're installing power pucks so that you have like a variety of USB as nice. well as standard outlets. Okay. On. We nice. plugged lamps in that have that. Anyway. So when I dealt with her back in August, she had been on a certificate. She wanted not only her points refunded, but she wanted double her points (laughs) as compensation for the fact that the room didn't have a USB outlet. You told her to suck it, go eat rocks, right? (laughs) No, but yes. Good. So anyway, fast forward till this morning. What? I have a front desk agent that is just starting with this. It was literally his second shift today. And he's been doing really well. Yay. But he comes back and he's like, hey, how do I make a duplicate key? Because you got to do it through the PMS. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, I'll I'll show you. No big deal. Give me just a second. So I stop what I'm doing. I hop up front. Who is he making a key for? Her. USB woman. Oh, my (gasps) God. The woman who- She came back. At the time of being so upset about how terrible this hotel is. And I'm never coming back. back. Did you say, oh, welcome back, Miss So-and-so? Oh, no. No, no. I, <laughs> I locked eyes with her, and I just smiled at her. Mm-hmm. And she got this look of just disgust on her face. <laughs> she took the key, turned around, and walked away. Love that. Kill them with kindness. I know, but it's one of those things where, again, I'm never coming back. Please, do me the favor. But don't threat. <laughs> don't, don't make an empty threat. I invite guests to do that. I had a different person today who was ripping a stink. I'll talk about that later. But I told her, I was like, you know what? If you're not happy here, if our accommodations aren't meeting your needs, I can call the hotel that is maybe two miles away, same brand, and I will have them transfer your reservation over there so that way you don't have to stay here. No, I'm not doing that. Oh, okay. Empty threats. Ugh. You know, it's like, if you would prefer to stay somewhere else, I'd be happy to make some calls for you. Literally did that today. Do you actually want to know what she was upset about? Yes. You do? You sure? (laughs) Yeah. So this was different than the lady that I wouldn't give lounge Uh, access to her entire family. I'm going to grab the handles on the opposite side of the grudge and help you lift this one. Thank you. I appreciate that. So we were going to have the water shut off for a brief period of time today because they had to make some pipe repairs. Is this uh, the follow-up from the repair store you were talking about a couple episodes ago? No. Whole different incident. They keep turning off the damn water (laughs) and I keep having to live through hell. So they did it today and they're like you know it could take the whole day so our plans when this happens is we do no early check-ins we don't tell people that's why we're not doing it we don't say no sorry we don't have water so we're not going to check you in so you can't complain and get compensation no we just say i'm so sorry there's not a room available check-ins at four o'clock we can give you a call if it's ready earlier that's all we say so the woman must have had someone staying at the hotel because we had letters going out to stay over guests the 
that said tomorrow the water's gonna be off from this time to this time and because so she calls at eight in the morning and says i heard you guys aren't gonna have water there today and i'm checking in today and are you guys doing compensation oh to which we looked at the reservation i'm like you're not even here so we told her no you're not even checked in yet yeah but i'm checking in today and we said check-ins at four and you will not be affected by the water shut off and she said well i requested an early check-in i'm supposed to get an early check-in requested And I said, yes, you requested an early check-in. It's not guaranteed till four o'clock. Seriously, but we're going to be in town earlier than that. Check-in is at four. The water will be restored by then. So we're not compensating for that. She raised living hell. Because you're not an actual guest until you check in at four o'clock. So she was demanding compensation for an issue that she wasn't even here for. So fast forward a bit and we told her, you know, check-ins at four. And I said, I'm happy to let you know if it's ready before then. She'd been chatting the front desk via the mobile app. Water got restored hours early. It was Mm -hmm. only off for two hours. Okay. So around one o'clock, chatted her back and I said, hey, your room is now ready whenever you'd like to check in and the water is fully restored. So there will be no issue. She comes to check in after three and is just angry as heck and was like, yeah, I talked to you earlier. I was like, oh yeah. And I was like, did you get my chat? It's like, you're what? I'm like, you know, you were chatting us and we're chatting you back while I sent you a message at 1.30 saying your room was ready. Well, I've been waiting because you said it was going to be at four. I said, yeah, but then I chatted you, you know, where you were chatting us and told you it was <laughs> ready. Well, I didn't look at that. Oh, well, that's oh, that's odd because you were chatting us there. So that's why I use that platform. But yeah, it's been ready since 1.30 and the water's been back on since then. Oh, well, well, OK. Um, Well, I want a high floor. Oh, well, the room you booked is on the bottom three floors. Oh, so I'll go ahead and check you into the room. Well, that was the only room it let me book. Yeah, because we're all sold out of the other room types. I'm going to check you into that double queen. I'm going to move you up to the third floor. Ooh, fancy. <laughs> well, I want to be in a quiet room. You got it. I'll put you all the way at the end of the hallway. <laughs> so that way there's no noise from the elevator or ice Keep machines. Liz, Make I you did walk. nothing but kill with kindness. I'm proud I of you. T- no, my bark is big. But when it comes to talking to guests, I hold my ground, but I do it with a smile and just this like, oh, like almost play dumb. And then she had issues and she came down. She's like, I need a different room. My keys aren't working for my room. And I said, oh my God, that is so weird. Let me reprogram them. And I'll walk you up to your room. Just make sure it works okay. <laughs> yeah. And she We're said, not going to move rooms. She said, no, 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 that's not necessary. I'm sure it'll work this time. And I said, I don't want you standing out there in the hallway. Just in oh case it doesn't. Oh my God, Miss B. So I said, no, no, no. It is my pleasure. Don't worry. It's no inconvenience to me. I'll walk you up. And I was fake as hell you just wanted her to be uncomfortable in the whole elevator and down that really long hallway to her quiet quiet room yes and i got her all the way up to the third floor walked all the way down the hallway i'm like you see it's so far away from the noise i hope you love everything and just continued like that and she just scowled and didn't even say goodbye just shut the door and i was like okay went back down <laughs> it, it, i can imagine you just skipping down the hallway like hee 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 i hope you hate me <laughs> but like literally it's funny because if she wrote a review there's nothing negative she could say no there's not i reached out to her to let her know her room was ready early i reached out to her to let her know that the water was off during her check-in i smiled and gave her exactly what she booked when she requested a quiet room i made sure it was the quietest at the end of the hallway and i personally escorted her up to her room to make sure everything worked okay yeah I don't see, my butt i don't Blah. see the problem <laughs> So that was my day to day. Oof. <laughs> Along with that other lady with the four rooms and the breakfast, wanting it for free for her entire family. Oh, free breakfast. You free just breakfast. said lounge. So because breakfast is in the lounge. Oh. So that's why she wanted the lounge access for her entire family because she said, and we plan on having breakfast here for the next three days. Oh. For sorry. her entire family. How did she take the news that only three rooms can have the number on it? Um well I so when I started to tell her, I was like, you know, you can't even have your rewards number on this many rooms, right? Now you're just blah, blah, blah. and that's when I said, you know what? I'm gonna connect you with the elite desk. And you can ask them these questions. And if anything's different, just let me know. And they'll reach out to me too. Heard nothing from her. So called her like 30 minutes later and be like, hi, Mrs. Smith. I just want to make sure you got in touch with the elite desk, okay? She's like, yeah, and they said you were right that <gasps> I can't. Did you love that? I did. I was like, oh, 
I'm so sorry. <laughs> Wait. I'm like, oh, okay. Well, just if you have any other questions, just let me know. I'm more than happy to answer those for you. <laughs> I'm here throughout your entire stay. So if there's anything you need, don't hesitate to ask. Her entire stay of one day. <laughs> no, those people are the ones that are here for like three days. Uh, the oh, one oh. breakfast every morning. Oh, right, right, right. Do you ever Ugh. do you ever go to the lounge and get breakfast? No, that's not allowed. You don't sneak in? No. Plus, okay, why anyone would want free breakfast there is beyond me. <gasps> they're not like hey, made to order eggs. No, they're out of a carton. Yeah. That are baked. And I mean, granted, there's like some fruit and stuff and like some bread, but I'm, I'm this this breakfast can't be more than ten dollars. Do you want to know why they want it? Because it's free. free. Exactly. But it's like this is nothing special. It's yeah, but- <laughs> But you know what I do love in Continental Breakfast, though? What? That little pancake machine. Yeah, we mm-hmm. don't even have that. That thing is dope. Isn't that Holiday Inn's thing? I have I no idea. So. I don't know. Those pancake machines are dope. It spits out the batter, and then you see it on a conveyor belt slowly cooking, and then it oh. flops over onto your plate. Perfect. Mm-hmm. That's cute. I've never seen that. Oh, I just like watching it cook. See, I like doing the waffle things and I just don't, loading I, it with Nutella. I don't mm. actually like pancakes. I prefer waffles. <laughs> so here, here's the thing with the free breakfast thing. I, I jokingly say it's about it because it's free. It's not. The reason they make a big deal out of it is because it's tied to their tier level. It's yes. an ego stroke. You've spent enough money to get this $10 breakfast yeah. because oh. of how many stays you have per year. And right. some of her family members who were in the other rooms were coming down. Her parents specifically came down to be like, um, I'm sorry, we didn't get a suite. And we're like, we looked at the reservation. We're like, you booked a standard two queen. They're like, yeah, but my daughter's a elite no. member. We should get an upgrade. <laughs> said no that's so, not how it works <laughs> so you know you asked about how many people like x y or z that i get at my hotel that is the number one thing for us is oh well yeah it's my husband's reward number or oh, it's my wife's oh. reward number oh well thank you for sharing that with now me. you get nothing i'm gonna take that off and we'll sign you up for your own mm-hmm. <laughs> no but 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 that's my spouse's right well, that's your spouse's it's yeah. not, not yours you. Mm-hmm. you can't share rewards numbers people get so pissed yeah See, I have to pick and choose when to do that battle just because also, you know, scores matter. And sometimes I'm like, is it worth it, this scenario? Because they do it so much that I'd be pissing off people constantly. Okay, so what would you suggest for an individual like that, like with a spouse that travels? Would you suggest them getting two separate numbers? That's the only way you can do it. And plus, we have friends in the fraud investigations unit, okay? Oh, no, for They'll sure. find you. Can you combine? Nope. Nope points to redeem nope okay. you can gift points so oh, oh, oh okay okay so say bill and miss b are going on vacation and they want to redeem points bill you can send your points of you know a specific brand to miss b and she can redeem a room on points well that depends where are bill and i traveling oh i don't know <laughs> Yes, you can do that. Somewhere (laughs) tropical and amazing and buy water. Yes, you can gift points. Perfect. Or buy wine. Like, that's fine, too. (laughs) Okay, good. Or roller coasters. I'll take the wine. Thank you. I will go back to alcohol. You'll take the wine over water? Oh, that's hard. I mean, do I have to sit by the water without wine? Um, No, there's wine for purchase. Mm, This is a tough decision. But But not a winery. (laughs) It's not a requirement. As long as there's wine. Oh, okay, okay. No, but I do like the champagne if uh, Mayo is listening. I'll send them the link. Maybe we should do a pod trip. Oh my God, we've talked about this. We have to yeah. do it. Remember we were going to do it at that haunted one? Yeah, but I, that, still, I still I would, would like en- to. I would enjoy that better. Yeah, I think- Ooh, I, drink and pod, yes. Yeah. Okay. Maybe you can combine rewards. We shouldn't even have rewards points. Yeah, you probably shouldn't. Oh my Wait, God. no, yeah, you can have rewards points. Can- That's a new thing. Can you? Now we can, but that's brand new. They didn't allow you to previously? No, you couldn't even get status. Now oh. we can. I totally disagree with it, too. Wait, wait, wait. Let's talk about it. I, I hate that the employees are eligible for rewards points. Wait, if you're staying on a corporate code, can you be eligible to earn points? Yep. Yes. I don't think that's right. 100%. So basically, employee rate used to be considered a a, non, a non-qualifying rate, which yeah. means you didn't get to use point or you didn't get to any of the access to your benefits. Now it's a qualifying rate. They just don't get surveys. Fun fact. Oh, Bill's, for more wine. Bill's going to be upset. But so I oh, literally. I'm, carrying, I, I'm, I'm packing a bag for this grudge. <laughs> 
But the problem with that, it invites a lot of employee dishonesty Mm -hmm. and employees doing things they shouldn't, like adding the rewards number to like reservations they shouldn't because they're like, oh, I get points now. I get this. And my friend who's in the fraud division has kept them very busy. (gasps) Mm -hmm. Uh Uh-huh. So like someone like checking in without a rewards number, they don't pop their own on there. They just put their own. You'll get fired for it. There's a lot of bad things that can happen to you, like not even just with your property. But I'm not going to say it's never happened. <gasps> That's you scary. Always get, you always get caught in the end. Well, like the guy in Vegas that did, what was it, $700,000 in oh, refunds to his own yep. personal debit card? Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's always going to be people doing stuff like that, but they're going to get caught. Yeah. People don't get nervous. I like, feel like people like that, they do it for a while and they're not getting caught and they get comfortable and then they get stupid. You I know? still get nervous going on like a confront. Liz, that's what we call a conscience and you well, have one. Good yeah. job. <laughs> and maturity. Yes. Yeah. You don't. Too much of it. You get nervous and you don't hold grudges. You're the epitome of a perfect human. <laughs> and a perfect hotel guest. And yet I still ask you to come back for the pot. Yeah. So <laughs> and how- yet she's called the deviant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I was just going to make that point. How can I be <laughs> both of those people? <laughs> you, you're, you're a coin you got two sides to you they do the I dichotomy do. of liz mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah very true or i love because usually the people that are the most demanding there's a tier above them and i say absolutely and we appreciate your blueberry status so much but we have raspberry staying here tonight because they're a tier above you they actually are entitled to those benefits first Damn I, w- raspberries. I would rather get like free valet than free breakfast. Well, that ends up usually being more expensive. Yeah, so no expensive. Doubt. Valley starts at like what forty these days. Ugh. My it last goes up to eighty. My last day was forty six a night. Yeah, that sounds right. Forty six yeah. to do what? It gets worse. Three and minutes of work, parking a car. Mm. Oh yeah, go to like San any, Francisco any or San Diego. Diego. San Francisco, San Diego. They're like in the sixties. Yeah. <laughs> And okay, I'm sorry. This is a rant. This is a complaint. This is like a very luxury complaint. Wait, but- wait a second. I think we just made history. <laughs> what? I think this is the first Liz rant. <gasps> oh no, no, no. Okay, maybe eighteen rant, months maybe, without a rant. <laughs> maybe rant is like not the right word. But okay, get this. You're pulling up to a hotel, and obviously the easiest choice is to like pull up to valet, have them take care of you, bellman un, un unload your trunk, blah 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 of blah. Of course, but of course, I'm kind of a cheapskate. Like I'm staying in a hotel. Okay, I'm here. You have my money. Hello for however many nights. But you see on the signs, valet forty six, self park thirty. Nine. yeah right but i'm like <laughs> okay if i'm staying here three nights that's like 20 bucks i'm gonna save you know i'm gonna self-park i can carry my own bags i am a strong independent woman i can see, carry my I own bag like six dollar difference and i go yeah it's a seal I that way no 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 that's no because i'm like that's my coffee in the morning from the coffee shop in the lobby lazy that girl for it lazy girl always trumps logical girl for no, me but <laughs> can you tell me where's the self-parking lot oh it's like 600 miles away can't even find it it's a short train ride bus ride and then take a quick plane literally have done a lap around blocks of <laughs> hotels looking for this self parking lot and you can't find it or there's like no parking available like it's full yeah, like, there's like you, nine stalls but, for self parking <laughs> yes. but you pulled a ticket so you're like do I have free 30 minutes I don't know do I risk it am I gonna have to pay for this self parking for 30 seconds to look for a parking spot that is not available and then end up having to valet my car and waste more money yes <laughs> it's such but thank you for being our guest. Crap. Such horse crap. Wait, I agree. And on that note of self-parking and pulling tickets, a lot of people bet on the fact that if they hit the call button, that they're just going to be let out, get out and then they don't have to pay. Guys, this just goes to show how petty I am. I go Do you answer the phone calls? Of course no! I do. Of course I do. Not only do I answer them, I interrogate them. <laughs> and I find yeah. out their room number, last name, and then I go check their reservation to make sure they're being charged for parking. And then if they're not, I add parking and add in the comments, let guests out of gate this date, this time. I am that petty and i am so sick of people you should get <laughs> some sort of like commission for I get none of it i do it for the joy in my yeah, heart I was gonna for say, the, grudge. You get the satisfaction <laughs> of the grudge yes 100 percent. i'm like ha, ha, i got them well, they should run a report and be like how many times did miss b write notes in reports <laughs> of like people getting out of the parking garage my agents have asked they're like why are your notes saying this and i'm like because i added parking and they were gonna try to get out of the gate and they're like laughing because nobody cares as much as me <laughs> 
But this is my gripe with hotels is that there's all these add-ons yeah. from parking and valet resort, and resort fees. fees. Can you know. we just put it in the price? Yes. Thank that's, you. No, but that's like a new law now. Yeah. It goes into effect in January. Uh-huh. Oh, all in? Yeah. Yep. In our particular hotel brand, if you go to look now, it took me a while to notice this. I'm like, why are the prices suddenly higher? My rate used to be lower. Mm-hmm. It's because they're adding in all those fees now in the total. When you're looking the book, that button is the total. And it includes all those fees. But I think that's also a benefit to the guests because it's like, okay, you say, know what you're getting into. Say your nightly stay, you know, previously was 200. Mm-hmm. And you're like, all right, I'll stay for a night, da da da, check out. And then all of a sudden it's like 312. Well, like, that's where how did that $112 come hotels from? Hotels get sneaky in that way because they know the typical user is not going and looking at all the fine print of the parking, the resort fee, and this no. and that. They wouldn't think of our tiny property and think, oh, resort, resort fee. And so they would kind of hide it there in the fine print. And then they go, I got fought on a daily. Like, what do you mean this is a resort? What do you mean a resort fee? So mm-hmm. I know now that that's a fact, they won't get away with that because their rates will be so high compared to the area. They're either going to have to bring the rate down what or get rid of the it, resort fee. What makes it a resort to get a resort fee? Literally, all you have to do is just decide you are. Oh, okay. It was something they came up with one day to get more money. Oh. And I know that because they said that. It's a bottom line grab. Yeah. Ah. So basically, they can make their rate comparable to the area, but they had a resort fee and now they're making more money right, than everyone right, else. Right. So your star report's better. Because mm. look at it this way. So if you sell a room, you have expenses that go along with that room from your labor to your supplies to utilities etc and it it goes deep because you've got you know everything from the processing of linen to the little shampoos that go in the room to the front desk agent etc so your cost per occupied room to operate that room is going to be x number of dollars so basically you have a profit margin with parking with resort fees Mm -hmm. it's 100 percent profit Mm. there's no expense tied to it Mm -hmm. so you know you have a 200 room hotel let's just say you have a 10 dollar parking fee you have a sold out hotel you just cleared an extra two grand that has no expense tied to it pure profit Mm -hmm. and that's my problem though is that it just grinds my gears that the industry that i work in is just nothing more than a money grab at this point yeah where where did where did hospitality go yeah the only time in my brain i can justify a parking fee is because i've worked in properties like in downtown areas like san diego almost none of the hotels own their parking structures they're all owned by third parties and lease so those parking fees are literally to basically pay the rent to be able to use the parking so in my brain i'm like okay I get that. It's almost like I'm renting a second room because they don't own that. Right. But when you own and operate your parking, it's it's literally a money grab. But you know what, though? I hear you. I understand it. I can somewhat agree with it. But here's my problem with it is that boo on that property development and boo on the city that cleared it. Because if you're building- To not build a parking structure. Or just have adequate parking. Mm -hmm. The hotel that I'm at now is the first hotel that I have ever been at since I've lived out here Mm -hmm. that has had enough parking stalls for every room on the property. Yeah, that's hard to come the first one so like one of the hotels i was at was 200 rooms we had 163 stalls what yeah well because they bank on a lot of people ride sharing airports shuttles taxis. it's a gamble that's literally gambling every but single day if you have a group in house that you know they're all locals or at least in the remotely local area you know they're all driving in you're mm-hmm. gonna be screwed that weekend well my property we have an event with 18 people we're full yeah yeah we're full you have no mem- parking with members stayovers people just enjoying the resort going to the public restaurant you literally have 20 extra people on property we're booked we're completely full that's why i have to shuttle in well like that hotel that i was just talking about we had 200 rooms half of them were suites they would sleep eight people oh my Mm -hmm. god so you know you that's at least two cars a lot of times no one has a minivan come on do minivans hold eight people I don't even know. Isn't it seven? I'm not a minivan mom. Not everyone has a Sprinter. (laughs) (laughs) Right? So you get these hotels that are approved with far fewer parking stalls than they have rooms for. And that's, to me, that's just irritating. It's irritating. Mm. Guys, this kind of turned into a group rant episode. I know. End of year, just making it through. It's the end of year unloading. Yes. To quote our last episode, or no, two last before last, surviving, not thriving. No, that was the last one. (laughs) Not when this hair. Well, it's the one before this one, which would technically be the last one. Who's the on? last one would be the one that just... Who's on first? Whatever. Who's first? No, that was, what, that was what we got into the last time when I was like, no, this is like two <laughs> weeks ago or the week before the week before last. What day is it? Yeah. Who am I? It Where would be two I? episodes ago. Yeah, yeah. 
I feel according, like we're all disagreeing. According to the... I'm, I'm silently disagreeing. <laughs> Wait, I, 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 wasn't, eyes. I wasn't even really listening. I know. I just assume Miss B was talking about two... Epi- was it three episodes ago? No, it was the one that's going to post day after tomorrow. Oh, it's our last episode. The last episode. Yeah. Okay, Bill, I think you're going to appreciate this. I was on one of my socials. Okay. You know, shocking. And one of my friends posted an article on her Instagram. Okay. And it was a news story about a hotel. And I was like, oh my God, we were literally just talking about this. So I wanted to share it. I know. Sorry, guys. This is kind of like random, but I just remembered. And that's how my brain works. And it's an article by Forbes that says, Ritz Hotel in Paris finds missing $800,000 ring in the vacuum cleaner. <gasps> that is a news story about a hotel in Paris. In a vacuum. Hold yeah. on. The research department is reviewing. And that like blew my mind. But also like, I was like, yeah, I could see that. That tracks. Because how many times have you had guests be like, I know you stole my stuff. So many times. No, you just left it on the floor. An $800,000 ring. It suddenly gets sucked up by a vacuum. That means it was on the floor somewhere that someone didn't see it. It wasn't very important to you if you don't know where your belongings are. What is your income that you can have an $800,000 ring? Drop on the floor. Why would you even take that off? I mean, maybe it was so heavy. Why would you even have that? (laughs) So heavy. (laughs) Eight hundred thousand dollars just hurts your hand. You can't keep it on. I gotta put this down on the floor. Could you imagine leaving a hotel room you, without your eight hundred thousand dollars? That's ring? exactly what I was gonna say. I couldn't I would, even fathom like taking my eyes off yes! of it, like going to the bathroom. I would wake up in a cold sweat that it wasn't on my hand. Yeah. I mean, even take off like a couple zeros and I would still be mm-hmm. like, oh my God, my ring. And I, <laughs> I don't know, short of a house, I can't imagine owning anything that was $800,000. No, wow. me too. Oh, yeah. I and, just, I, I don't know. I Maybe this is an unpopular opinion, but I, <laughs> people that have that much money that buy stuff like that, I kind of feel good. I'm glad your ring ended up in a <laughs> vacuum. Yes. True that. You could have invested that 800000 and... Made another zero. True that. But maybe, no, okay, maybe that's a stretch. But <laughs> when I read that well, article over time, I mean, if they would have invested that eight hundred thousand in like cryptocurrency, then they would have had a zero. It's eight years ago, that's true. So, but when like I read that article or saw that, my brain immediately went to like our hospitality housekeeping backgrounds. Where at one property in San Diego, I had a guest or literally yell at me at the front desk because they said my housekeeper stole their class ring out of their room and swore I knew exactly where I left it. Your housekeeper stole it. The police got him. Involved. okay they where was it a- at their home <laughs> <laughs> but literally that the jewelry the police- cabinet like in the safe yeah, in, behind yeah. a photo frame like in the closet somewhere like that but the guests got the police involved there were police reports poor little housekeeper still remember her to this day sweetest little lady like would never was just she was traumatized after all of this and then two weeks later the guest calls the hotel and says yeah i don't know if you remember me and i was like oh i do he told us he's like we actually we found the ring and i was like you did and he's like, yeah. I'm like, so are you going to call the police station and withdraw that report? Because the housekeeper is traumatized to this day thinking she's going to get arrested for something that you lost. It's so sad. And so, yeah, when I saw this news article, I immediately thought of that housekeeper. So and wait, where did they find the ring? In the vacuum cleaner. No, your ring. Oh, he just found it. He didn't tell me where. He's like, yeah, we f- we found it. <sighs> so they you didn't dig. It. I was too peeved. I was mm. too peeved. I didn't say, where'd you find it? I was just like, oh, you found it. Was this you? a long time ago? Yeah. This was you like were still 10 green. years ago. You were still green. That was you my... didn't know to, ha- to ask. <laughs> that was my first supervisor job. And oh. I was just losing my faith in humanity every day. Oh. And you're like, oh, of course I did. Okay, bye. No, but I said, I told him, like, you're going to call the police department and withdraw that report, aren't you? Mm-hmm. And he was like, oh, I, I need to do that. It was like, yeah, you put a housekeeper through literally hell. Oh. She's traumatized to this day thinking that she's going to be arrested for something you lost. I said, you need to call. And he was like, oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, okay. Yeah, and, and I hate to break it to you, bro. Nobody nobody wants your class ring. Nobody. Yeah, what? A class what they gonna, ring. No, no, they could melt it down for for gold for what the 14 carat yeah get a whole 30 bucks yeah if they were that desperate so dumb i'm trying to save six bucks to buy people. coffee like there are <laughs> people true. out there that, that so that liz would bucks. melt it down no i that's, wouldn't, that's no, I wouldn't. For her coffee there are people out there that are desperate how much coffee can i get for a class have rate? you seen those freaking storefronts that are like cash for gold yeah that's true yeah but not for class rates. D- they'll take your money might be 12.99 <laughs> but they'll take your money 
Horrible. Or they'll take your ring and give you twelve ninety nine. I'm sure there's bad people out there, but nine times out of ten, guys, the poor housekeeper's just no. there to make her minimum wage. Yeah, the housekeepers just want to put their head down and work really, really freaking hard to provide and for their make families, a living. Man. Yeah. Leave them alone. Man, I've and said that in lots of episodes, but tip your housekeeper, leave I, them alone. I was gonna exactly. say that. <laughs> Sorry, Liz. No, it's okay. It's your line. You can have it. Sorry, I'm passionate <laughs> for, my, for my ladies and men in the, in the, the keepings keeping of the, the house. The keepings I mean, of the house. You know, it's not like they put their hands in 16 different toilets and make 24 different beds every day. Mm-hmm. I, that. I don't know how they do it. Okay, okay. What's worse, though? A room attendant or a lobby attendant? What do you mean what's worse? Like the job that yeah. they have to do? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Room attendant. Room attendant, 100%. Think- lobby attendant's the cushy one. Oh, when yeah. someone goes on... Light duty? Yeah, so basically modified Modified light duty. duty so basically you they have put, a doctor's note they go to lobby oh the real heavy lifting's on housekeeping like I, in the rooms yeah did i ever tell you about the room attendant that claimed that she had a back pole injury from Ugh. doing sofa beds <laughs> I, I remember her sorry go on so she had a uh, doctor's note saying you know no lifting no bending no carrying anything over five pounds oh, five pounds yeah so you can't even pick up a gallon of milk i was gonna say a bottle of wine <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so we had to find modified duty for her. So what did we do? We put her in the breakfast area, greeting guests as they came in for breakfast. Oh, all how she much had to, did she hate that? All she had to say was good morning and smile. Yeah. Good morning. 100%. Good morning. Good morning. For eight hours? Good morning. No. Breakfast only ran for three hours. Okay. So what'd she do the, her other five of the shift? No, no. She only did it for one hour. Her schedule was to clock in at 8 a.m. Mm-hmm. Breakfast oh. concluded at nine. Okay. So it was one hour. And honestly, by the time she gets punched in, goes through the morning briefing and gets to the work area. It's 8.13. 40, 40, 45 minutes. Yeah. <laughs> she didn't even finish one shift greeting people. Say, she walks off morning. the shift. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. She didn't even say anything. She smiled oh. at a couple of people and then just walked away. And then we couldn't find her. Turned out that she literally just kind of like went home. And like two days later, we got a lawsuit in the mail. Lawsuit? Yeah. What? Claiming that we were forcing her to work in a position that was not what she was hired for. But 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 but, but you're on. But, yeah. And, okay. And creed number one in our industry is that you greet all your guests. So how is it that we're asking her to do something that's outside of her job set? You won, right? Yes. We we ended up winning that. One. No that's matter kind. what your job is in a hotel, you have to greet guests. It's yes. like day one stuff. I don't know if that's like shocking for our listeners. Mm. There's no way. Because but. most of our <laughs> listeners, I feel like, work or have worked in the service industry. That's just a service industry requirement. Or, I'm sorry, have traveled? <laughs> Yes. You know what's have okay. stayed in a hotel before? So back when I was on Maui, one of the things that one of my bosses at the time used Wait, to do. Wait, don't love you like doing. don't you like how Bill says that? I was on Maui, not in Maui. On. I love on. it. It's an island. You're Keep on an going, island. Keep going, island boy. At, you're um, you're in Maui? That's true. I don't know. That just sounds like dirty. um No, I like it. On Maui. Uh, uh, I've just noticed that recently. Okay. I'm sorry. I want to be on Maui too. Go on. Any hoozy. Any hoozy. One of my bosses, one of the things that he loved doing the most was greeting all the guests that were like fresh off the plane. <laughs> because his whole thing with it was that you're on an island. You're not there for just a couple of days. You're there for a while. Yeah. He would play the game that when he would see them the first time and he would say, hello, good morning, good afternoon, whatever it is, people wouldn't look at him and they wouldn't respond to him. It was just like, oh, you're talking to me? Right? <laughs> but then by like day four, he would wear them down. And then like they would become different people. It was just kind of interesting to see like, wow. you know, people actually kind of decompress from their protective mainland status or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> and actually just kind of relax and, and enjoy their time that. and say hello see my toxic trait one of them if you know, say don't, hi don't, to me don't limit yourself to just one <laughs> i know just one of them other than being so kind no the funny thing is like i'm all angry and bitter on the outside <laughs> and <laughs> angry and bitter on the inside <laughs> No, but like if someone says hi to me, like if that was me and I'm getting off plane, they say hi. Like I'm like, hi. I always say like hi back. And yeah. like my spouse will be like, you're not at work. You don't have to do that. Oh no, I'm I like, always I do. I can't. I can't turn it off. Getting on and off a plane, I'll agree. I I'll greet them before they I greet me. doors open for people. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> wait, wait. I got a question for you. Yeah. Do you like see random trash on the ground and pick it up? No. No. I'm a germaphobe. Yeah, that's kind of dirty. Can't do that. At yeah. work? Yeah. I don't even let my kid do it. I go, no, 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 not our trash. We leave it. Because <laughs> at work, there's sanitizer nearby. Mm-hmm. Or gloves. Or, I mean, do you keep sanitizer in your purse? No, but they're everywhere. 
Do you keep gloves in your purse just in case? No. Ever need to perform CPR first aid? Uh, I am not a medical responder and I don't know how to do CPR. You're not CPR certified? No, ma'am. Girl, I'll, I'll certify you. Thank you. <laughs> I'm not. Um, the TFTSI household can become <laughs> CPR first aid Yay! AED certified that for should be our class. adult and pediatrics. I'm going to sing the song. Ha, 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 ha. Stay alive. But Liz Stay can alive. teach you. I'm so excited. You know, what, you know what the other song is, ironically, right? <laughs> what? Another One Bites the Dust. Oh, that's funny. Yeah. <laughs> it's it's the same beats per minute. Mm-hmm, it is. <laughs> so what's, you, what's the beats per minute, Bill? I don't recall what the beats per minute is for it. Oh, she knows. 100 to 120 beats per minute. Damn. Or compressions per minute. Yeah, definitely. I'm not doing that out in public. But I say hi to people. But if you start I'll, to die, you're, you're I'll hold done. your door open. But if you go down... <laughs> You're staying down. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, make sure You're not staying alive. <laughs> make sure you chew that steak well, because there's no Heimlich in your future. <sighs> oh, my God. But I do know how to Heimlich. But I wasn't taught it in a class. But if you attempt to save somebody and you succeed or fail and you're not certified, they can sue you. Yeah, I'm not touching anyone. I will just greet you. Good morning. Good evening. And good call it a day. Yeah, call it a day. <laughs> but no, like even... I'll be walking down the street and I was with my boss at one point and someone yelled like, how you ladies doing? Or like something like that. And I turned and smiled and she's like, why are you looking? And I was like, I was just being polite. She's like, you don't be polite to random people on the street. I'm like, uh, it's hard to turn off. <laughs> like commenting out your looks like, hey, how you doing? Thank you, sir. <laughs> <laughs> in did my it, head i'm thinking go eat bricks and die but, but I did it boost like, your confidence like mm, thank you no I, no I was in full work mode i was like oh thank you like but in my head i'm just mm. like mother fuck okay i have a follow-up question to your trash question okay. totally like not hospital well i guess kind of do you put your shopping carts back yes of course okay 100%. we're not monsters oh, I'm t- it was a question I, I may hold a grudge I, but i'm not a monster not a savage okay you never just like put it on the curb Mm -mm. so okay mom life okay i was about to say (laughs) the only time i will do that is again because i'm always with a toddler when i'm not at work Mm -hmm. and i put her in the car first because she's heavy and i'm weak and i can't carry her back the whole way so i put her in the car buckle her and i leave the door open so i can keep an eye while Mm -hmm. i put the shopping cart back if there are some places where i they want you to bring the cart up back to the front of the store and i can't leave my kid that far alone then i'm like okay you brought this on yourself you didn't put cart returns in the parking lot you're giving people jobs Uh, but at that point i'm like i I can't leave my kid to go all the way to the front of the store Mm -hmm. and then i will leave it on a curb but i feel terrible i purposely park if i know i'm gonna be using a shopping cart near the shopping cart return because i'm that lazy yes but i'm always scared my car is gonna get dinged so my car is so old i don't give two craps that's why the Mm. the trick with it when you park near a cart return is you always park on the uphill side if it's like a sloped parking lot oh very true very Very smart very smart gravity works Mm. Mm-hmm. Gravity works. And the earth is round. Sorry, listeners, if you didn't know that. Hey, there's like 7% of people that'll argue with you on that. I know. Tila Tequila is one of them. 7%? Yeah. And it's growing. Crazy. Um, Sorry, I, listeners. <laughs> we're of the 93% of the individuals that believe that. I can... yeah. don't want to stir up too much controversy, but. Yeah, I'm glad to be in the 93 batch. Me too. Me too. Maybe we just made it 93.1%. Maybe. I think you're hopeful. Way too hopeful. You haven't worked with the public long enough. Any hoozy. Just kidding. <laughs> Phil, do you have any fun news stories? We kind of got off on a tangent, but. No, actually, I was going to cap it here. And Oh, dang. I love that. Oh, my God. An official wrap to season two. Oh, my God. It's it's <gasps> oh an episodic God. wrap. It's a seasonal wrap. It's the whole nine. At least it's not a series wrap. We're not giving up never you're stuck with us listeners i'm just thinking like of a wrapping paper right now from our previous conversation before (laughs) recording (laughs) it is the holiday season guys it's true it's true so wrapping paper is on the brain it makes me sad to say we're done with the season sad and yay we did it well yeah absolutely i mean yay we did it but also really really excited for season three yeah i am too so you know like we were saying earlier we're gonna take a a spot of a break a little bit a little bit not sure when we're gonna be back probably february i think i think we can say yes it's not gonna be march again no it won't be it won't be march but we're gonna need to take a little bit of a break so we've got christmas we've got new year's we've got all of our life hassles (laughs) 
<laughs> yeah. Someone's surgery Recovery. coming up. Oh, yeah. For the listeners. We don't know if Liz is going to actually be here for the start of season three. I, you are. I might have to have surgery. You'll be on the phone. You'll just be loopy on drugs. Nothing is scheduled yet. <laughs> I am healthy. We just need to fix a little bit of vertebrae issues. Well, but. and for that recovery period, I've already decided you're going to have a name change. So you're going to go from... Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you're going to go from the, the resident deviant to okay. a resident gimp. All right. I love that. Yeah, yeah I and I just might be on the couch in a neck brace. But I will still bring the funnies, okay? And be a deviant. I'm sure there's going to be stuff between now and then. You're not going to forget. Agreed. Yeah. But it's just going to change. Any yeah. So, uh, anyways, thanks for listening. We love having the support. We love having all of our listeners, yes. whether you're domestic or international. Agreed. And while we are going to take a break, we will be back in season three, which will be sometime at the beginning of 2024. Whoa. Woo! I know, right? Wow. And until then, thanks for listening. Bye. Bye. AvenuePodcast.net